Hello and welcome to Progress Cast with your host, Patrick Riley, and our guest, Patrick Hazela. <laughs> yeah, plus, I mean, it's, it's like Godzilla. I like that. You just think of it that way. Today we'll be talking about microtransactions in games. Our first topic is, are they to be considered gambling? And what are the complications if that does happen? So Patrick, what's your background with games right now? So with games, uh, I may or may not have been playing video games essentially since I was like five years old maybe. Uh, so it's been about 22 years, pretty much my whole life. Uh, currently, I have been spending a lot of time playing games that have microtransactions in them, as most games do. So those being Diablo, Call of Duty, spent a lot of time on those, Overwatch, uh, and then even Super Smash Brothers has DLC in it now. So you mentioned Overwatch. What's the difference in your opinion between a loot box and buying Mewtwo, the DLC character for Smash? So specifically, uh, you know, I looked into some articles before coming here, and specifically with Overwatch, a lot of the things you get from the loot boxes, or I mean pretty much everything, is cosmetic. So you're not going to get anything that changes the actual gameplay versus... Uh, in Super Smash Brothers, any of the downloadable characters that you can get will change the gameplay because it is a completely different character that you can play as or play against. And that alone creates a different experience for e each player uh, just based on gameplay alone. So we mentioned two different kinds of transactions, but let's mix, the, mix those two together. Game changing and random. We get to combat loot boxes in... Star Wars Battlefront 2 from EA. So with the combat loot boxes uh, where you can get, you know, things that will change the gameplay and it's all at random, that that does add that extra thrill of, uh, you know, am I going to get something that's going to make me a better player than someone else uh, at possibly a cheaper price? So I uh, actually, if I can, I'd like to reference League of Legends because uh, I spent a lot of time on League of Legends, and they have in that uh, mystery skins, mystery champions that you can uh, essentially buy for other people a chance that you spend, you know, a quarter of the highest price it would cost for a champion, and you could possibly get a champion that costs less or a champion that costs a lot more because they're newer or they're better. And that alone kind of adds that little bit of randomness of, like, am I going to get a good character for cheaper, or am I going to be spending, you know, 400 points for someone that costs 100 points uh, and doing that three times then you know I've spent 1200 for $300 or 300 points worth I think when it changes gameplay the intention of what you are you know putting that money into uh, changes Now, there's a lot of cases coming up uh, in terms of legality. A lot of courts are getting involved. Is it gambling? All right. So I think before I can really comment on this conversation, I am a person of semantics. So where I'm going to come in here is I like to have a solid definition to reference as we're going to continue this conversation. Being a counselor, I'm going to take the definition that falls in the DSM-5, which is a diagnostic statistic manual for gambling addiction, essentially. And the the definition that we kind of use for that is that gambling can, de can be defined as either risking money, valued items, or behaviors uh, in the hope of gaining something of greater value. So by following that mindset, when you have games that can change the outer that you can buy these loot boxes, these microtransactions for loot boxes specifically, that can change the outcome of a game, uh, I do feel that that could be considered 
gambling uh, under that definition. However, uh, you know, other microtransactions like, you know, the loot boxes in Overwatch where it's not changing the gameplay, I think that could be argued that that may not be as big of an issue. And there, there's a lot of different avenues to go with this. On a side note in that same topic, you did mention the emotional concept before. If it matters to the person but doesn't affect the gameplay, can it still be gambling? Is Overwatch on the chopping block when people get really, really attached to wanting a skin that the only way to get it is through random chance? Yeah, so I think that is where the argument can be made one way or the other. Gambling, by definition, like a lot of these actions of buying loot boxes, regardless of the outcome, could easily be considered gambling. Uh, but whether or not it becomes a point where someone it's something that could be addictive is where I'm kind of seeing this conversation. So if someone ends up going on this game thinking, I'm going to go on Overwatch with the intention of buying loot boxes to get this emote or skin, then that is more on the addictive side of your gambling because you want this and you know that this is going to be the reward you get. Where on the contrary, uh, if you're doing it very passively, like it is still considered gambling to go to a casino for a night and spend money. But if you go to a casino for the night because, you know, you're on vacation for a week and there happens to be a casino, but your main intent of that vacation is not to go to the casino, it's still considered gambling, but it's not really to a point where you're gambling because you have that addiction. So the, the whole concept is like, yes, it could be considered gambling, but is it negative, a negative connotation? On to our second topic. If it does become considered legally gambling, it will get a rated R18 tag from the ESRB, most likely. Now, those kind of tags have not kept children away from games before. But what are the implications if games like Overwatch or Team Fortress 2 get slapped with an R18 tag? My opinion, uh, just from what I remember, it's really hard to get a violent game into the market of Australia. R18 games would, any game with loot boxes would probably have a really hard time getting into Australia. Might even, be, might even get banned outright if they have gambling. What's the future of gaming in the short term if this case, these cases do mark them as gambling and the ESRB changes the rule? So I think there are two two things I would like to touch on this subject. Uh, one being that, you know, let's say that does happen and everything ends up being rated, you know, 18 up, 17 up, depending on where you are. I think the, there would be, I honestly think there would be a huge overhaul of why are we rating all of these games of gambling because either games are going to stop having these loot boxes, which realistically I do not think would happen at this point, or ESRB is going to make this consideration of do we really need to have, you know, 17 up, 18 up because there's gambling. So that's one side that I wanted to bring up. The other being, uh, I think it would be completely ridiculous to do that. For ESRB to say, well, because there's something that can be considered gambling, we're going to make it 17 up, 18 up. Uh, realistically, if you're gambling with in-game currency uh, and you can't make a profit off of it, I don't really see that negative connotation at the same level of, like, if you're playing Steam games like CSGO, yeah, if you're playing a CSGO game where you get, uh, yeah, you get any item that you can sell back for money. And like, most of these things sell back for 10 cents, but there's the one rare item that someone can sell for, you know, let's say $40. US, US dollar. And it's just, you know, with the intention of that, yes, those games, I think, should have that rating because, you know, if you have a 13-year-old spending their entire life trying to get this one item, that can really build an, an addictive personality disorder in that child at a, such a young age that will then build developmentally with them. Thank you very much, Patrick. And uh, for Progress Cast, this has been Patrick Riley. 
Hopefully we'll have another episode on this topic with another friend of mine. We'll talk about independent developers and how it feels to have to be forced to use microtransactions to stay alive. <laughs>